Ken on 94.9 WSJM. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Hello. Friday, March 1st. Welcome to it. Uh, and are you ready for it? Now oh, yeah. that it's March? Oh, yeah. It'll be uh, Easter before you know it. Are you getting angry? Am I getting angry? Yeah. Why? March Madness. Oh, <laughs> no. No, I have not been paying attention to the March Madness. Are you doing the brackets? Much. Are we doing the brackets? You know, I have not filled out a bracket in a couple years. Okay. We should fill out a bracket because we have not. As long not... as it doesn't cost any money. No, I'll just print off a bracket and you and I just uh, okay. see how we fare. I would like to um, do that. I have not been paying attention to college basketball all that much. I've been paying attention to uh, Michigan. Put a doubt Michigan's going to be in any <laughs> tournament. They have not been playing well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure. I know Purdue's really good. Okay. But, um, hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, let's do it. Let's do the okay. we have no idea what's going on bracket okay. challenge. <laughs> That'll be mine. <laughs> yeah. And we'll see how we fare in the end. All right. Uh, cloudy today and possible chance for some rain. High 45 looking at tonight. It's going to be cloudy and a low 35 uh, this weekend. Going to be nice on Saturday. Hmm. Uh, so you can get out and do some stuff. High 60. Hmm. We got that going for it's us. It's going to be beautiful this weekend. I'm going to be mm -hmm. doing some garage cleaning. Ooh, some more garage, garage cleaning. Garage cleaning. Yes. All right. Well, we got a lot to get to here this morning. Let's find out what's happening in the news. WSJM News Now. Team coverage from the WSJM Newsroom on News Talk Sports 94.9 WSJM. In the WSJM Newsroom, I'm Ken Lundberg. Good morning. Michigan Works is offering free CDL training to those interested in starting a career as a truck driver. Vice President of Workforce Paul Kirk tells us the agency is teaming up with Lake Michigan College and Regen Trucking School to teach commercial driving. He says it's a good way for someone to get a decent paying job in the field with strong demand. I just pulled some data today, and there are 68 active online job postings in the last 38 days. That's a 48% increase over the last 30-day period. We're expecting between now and 2028 an additional growth of 24% in demand for truck drivers, both local, regional, and long haulers. The training will take place over three weeks at the South Haven Lake Michigan College campus. Each of the job seekers that take advantage of this opportunity will spend one week, five days in a classroom setting, and then two weeks on the road actually learning and driving a uh, truck and trailer rig. Kirk says there are only 25 slots available and they're going fast. The training comes at no cost to the future drivers thanks to a grant. Cohorts begin in March and continue through July. Anyone interested should apply at the Michigan Works website. One Buchanan and the Out Center are planning a forum on the state of civil rights for the LGBTQ plus community. The Out Center's Mary Jo Schnell tells us with this being an election year and an important election, there will be plenty to talk about at the April forum. She says she hears from people in the community concerned about making schools safe, representation in libraries and local government issues. Folks want to know, what can we do? And so one of the things is get involved, get educated, but, you know, get involved. What's happening at your local school district? What's happening at your public library? Are you concerned about making sure that the institutions across our three-county area are equitable? One Buchanan's Adam Burke tells us the group holds two forums each year with past events covering topics like Black history and Native American issues. They decided to look at LGBTQ issues this year and reached out to the Out Center. He says they want to discuss concerns, but also recent wins. We're going to do a, just a level set on what current rights are, because a lot has changed over the last few years. People should know that in housing, public accommodation, and employment, you cannot be discriminated against any longer for being LGBTQ plus community. The guest speakers will be ACLU civil rights attorney Jay Kaplan and Equality Michigan Advocacy Director Emmy Zanotti. Chanel says the event will be controversial, so attendees can ask questions. Actually, conversational, probably not controversial as much as you might think. Mm. We'll see. Maybe it will. Uh, so attendees can ask questions of the speakers. The forum will be at the Buchanan Senior Center on Saturday, April 6, 11 a.m. to 1230. Registration is required for those who wish to take part, and we have a link at our website, wsjm.com. Buchan Maybe it'll be continental. 
like <laughs> breakfast. Ooh, breakfast. Oh, I'll mm. offer breakfast. Mm. Buchanan High School has received a $100,000 grant to purchase equipment for its career and technical education programs. Assistant Principal and CTE Program Director Mark Fry tells us the state 61C equipment grant will support programs including automotive technology, business management, computer systems, cosmetology, digital media, and sports medicine. Absolutely game-changing for our programs. Uh, the two marquee items that we got were a new lift for our auto program. So our one lift was getting kind of old, and this will be able to get more industry standard with that. And the other big ticket item, which was nearly $70,000, was our sports med 3D training table. Fry says Barry and Risa helped with the district applying for the funds. Buchanan Community Schools received around 100 student enrollments when the CTE program opened. They train both at the high school and at other schools. Fry says the new equipment will better help the students prepare for success in their chosen fields. And Edgewater Automation is sponsoring a robotics competition this weekend in Berrien Springs, set to feature 34 teams from all over southwest Michigan and the state. Company Robotic Technology Director Dave Goodenough tells us that the first robotics competition will kick off with a message from Edgewater President Tim Tate at 1030 on Saturday at Berrien Springs High School. He says the company wants to support robotics programs because they train students in a variety of skills that employers desperately need. It's what we do as a business. We have machines that we build from the ground floor up. The same scenarios. We got timelines. We have all this other stuff that we got to follow. And we're wiring, we're machining, we're engineering, we're controls, hardware. Everything that goes into this robot is pretty much what Edgewater does as a business. Each team will have their robot perform specific tasks like shooting rings into receptacles. Goodenough says the winners of the competition could move on to others, depending on how they're faring overall this year. He tells us it's amazing to see the kids in action, applying what they've learned all year in an exciting, competitive environment. The event is open to the public, and you can also watch online and Twitch. Ooh, yeah. Twitch. Turn on Twitch, nice. and you can watch it there. In the WSJM Newsroom, I'm Ken Lundberg. Very cool. Uh, we'll get to sports with Dave Wolf here in just a moment. Right now, let's find out what's happening around in the nation and the world with ABC News. ABC News, I'm Brian Clark in Moscow. All right, good morning, everybody. Ah. And as Jeff says, uh, hang on, it's finally and actually Friday. Because yesterday, I think he thought it was it was Friday. Yeah. Yesterday, yeah, I maybe? think it was Jeff yesterday that did that. So, um, welcome to Friday, Jeff. Good morning, Teresa. Morning, Teresa. Good morning, Bill. Hello, Bill. <clears throat> morning to all the other folks that are watching on this fine award-winning live stream. I wonder if Diane's out there. Hello, Diane. If I'm you're sure out there. she usually comes in a little bit later. Okay. Um. So yeah, I'm not sure. My, my Just, mom sometimes will pop in, which I'm like, what are you doing up? <laughs> Did you see PlayStation uh, had some layoffs this week? Really? Yeah. Why? Well, we're, I thought things were going so well. Drastic staffing cuts. Sony uh, earlier Oof. this week fired about 900 people Dang. from its PlayStation division and fully shut down its London studio. Wow. Yeah. They had been uh, building some co-op multiplayer games for PS5. Mm. Uh, let's see. Insomniac, Naughty Dog, and Gorilla all lost employees. Uh, despite the being, who, what are those games? Those are platforms. Okay. <laughs> those are, those are companies, you know, they have, it's just like the movies. Yeah. You know, if you go and see a movie, it's like the production by companies. Warner okay. brothers okay. and it's then a blah, blah, blah it, film. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's that kind of thing. So those three companies lost employees as part of this, oh, uh, man. layoff deal. They're doing well. They say they're doing fine, but, uh, I bet it has something to do with AI. Mm. There's AI stuff that can probably do a lot of stuff that the programs were doing. Uh, so anyway, hmm. but, uh, let's see, it's March. Today is March and already more than 7,000 video game workers have been laid off this year. Oh my gosh. Last year was 9,000 total. Wow. Yeah. So that industry is seeing some change. Sure. Yeah. And I bet you it's AI. <laughs> it's probably something, uh, yeah. with the, the ways of either AI or some sort of way of automating certain, uh, aspects of it mm -hmm. troubleshooting things even building of some stuff i'm i'm always fascinated by the sandbox games i love the sandbox yeah. games because 
as a, as a, as a character in the video game, you can go anywhere at any time and interact mm -hmm. with everything. Right. And it's like, how do they even do that? Yeah. Computer programming wise. Right. I get the accounting programs. Yeah. Don't get the video. Well, and stuff. You, you have these games like, uh, like Warcraft was one of them too, for oh, the longest yeah. time where they were like continuing to build worlds. Duh. As the game was already out, like yeah. it's like not, it's a game. Oh yeah, guys, we just introduced more worlds and just I, <laughs> I just marvel at the the images and the videos yeah. of. I don't even like want to play the game. I just want to like go into the game look and look around. It. Yeah, and then somebody kills you. <laughs> right, then, then some big monster. <laughs> hey, look at that beautiful cliff and tree. Giant <laughs> giant troll smashes me with a hammer. Johnny Smash. <laughs> But uh, no, it's cool to see some of that stuff. And yeah. and I think as we keep talking about it, the uh, the AI world, the uh, the virtual world, mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of these games are going to be even more complex now because you put the VR headset on and you're living in that world for a long time. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever read the book or seen the movie Ready Player One, we are oh, like... Yeah this close to getting to that point <laughs> uh and speaking of living in virtual worlds what about microsoft and uh open ai they are getting slapped with even more legal claims oh great lawsuits again as uh three more news sites are suing them over copyright infringement so remember ai artificial intelligence the current iteration that we're looking at mm -hmm. learns everything it knows Quote, the quote, knows yeah. through the internet. What is it crawling when it's doing the internet? A lot of news content, mm -hmm. including our news content sure. and uh, of others. And it's using that to bolster what it offers to people mm -hmm. when you put in the prompts. Uh, so three more news organizations are suing Microsoft and OpenAI saying, uh, you, you, you're taking our stuff without giving us anything back. So that's uh, copyright infringement. Yep. Uh, you got to give us something. The Intercept, Raw Story, and Alternet. Haven't heard of any of those, but uh, New York Times was one that started this late last year when they sued both of those companies for copyright infringement, uh, saying that it wants to hold them responsible for billions of dollars mm. in statutory and actual damages. Wow. So I don't know if these lawsuits are going to slow down mm -hmm. AI, because how do you have something crawl the internet and it's like, oh, wait, that's got a little trademark on it. We got to skip over that. Right. Yeah. Then what do you have? Mm -hmm. Then what's your artificial intelligence? Mm. What's it giving you? Marshmallows? Ooh, I do love marshmallows. <laughs> uh, Jeff appreciated your Johnny Smash. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny uh, Smash. And Bill says, what about Tron? I will say, yeah, we're kind of kind of getting into that Tron world, too, where, yeah. you know, I don't know if you've seen the, have you seen the second one? No. The remake? No, it's not a remake. It's a continuation. Oh, no. It's called Tron Legacy. No. And no, it no. came out. Um, I refuse mm, to see that. No, it's good. Oh, is it good? It's really, really good. Does it have Jeff Bridges in it? Absolutely. Does it really? Absolutely. Oh, well, he okay. Is, maybe I will no, see it. No, it's, it, I will say, it is <laughs> fantastic. And not only will you love the, uh, the movie, yeah. but you will love the soundtrack. Daft Punk oh, does like the whole entire thing. And really? Daft Punk makes an appearance. Okay. It's so good. And they're making a third one. They're making a third one oh. with Jared Leto. And I think maybe they can reunite Daft Punk. That's what people are wanting to do. <laughs> Honestly, I think a, a Daft Punk reunion just to score the movie. Mm -hmm. That's a win. That would be cool. That's fun. But yeah. Check it out. Tron okay. Legacy. Right. It's on Disney Plus. Okay. A Peugeot. The Morning Show with Johnny and Ken on News Talk Sports 94.9 WSJM. Hey, good morning. You can be part of the show anytime. You can call 925-WSJM. You can email let's talk at WSJM.com. It's uh, kind of a Friday free-for-all today. Oh, boy. Uh, we've got a lot of things that we've been catching up on, uh, recapping, mm -hmm. and doing all that, that fun stuff. Uh, we were just talking about uh, virtual reality and AI and as well as uh, Tron. Yes. Which you did not know there was a second Tron movie. Uh, I remember the original. I remember the original video game. That was a lot of fun. Did you ever play it? With I the, never played the video there game. There were like four different games, and I don't remember what three of them were, but there was the one with the motorcycles, mm -hmm. where basically you're on this grid, and you've got, just like in the movie, I'm sure, you mm -hmm. have to go without crossing your opponent's path, otherwise you die, because right. it's a virtual thing that turns into a real wall. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was the fun game. 
Yeah, uh, you haven't seen the new one, but it has uh, you know Michael Sheen, yeah. that actor. Yeah, he's in it. Okay, he, he's great. Yeah, and then of course Jeff Bridges makes an love makes Jeff a, Bridges an appearance in there. Um, yeah, it came out in 2010. Yeah, didn't see it. So, to get uh, maybe get Andrew Green's flick pick review on <laughs> some throwback movies we do we do have his review coming up later today what's he we reviewing? do it's uh it's a movie i've not heard of okay something about dolls i think um yeah i've not i've not had a chance to see it drive but away dolls drive away dolls oh. no idea what that's about so i guess we'll find out we after will. eight yeah but uh yeah maybe we should have him uh we should randomly toss him a couple i'm sure he's probably seen them <laughs> Because he probably has some obscure, obscure uh, movie knowledge like me. And uh, I say we throw some like 80s movies, mm. 80s or 90s obscure movies mm -hmm. and uh, see, see what he what he thinks about him. Yeah. Um, you could do THX 1138. Ooh, yeah, I've not seen one. that one to George Lucas. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, that's why we always when we see the movies. That have the THX, the <laughs> thing. It's good stuff. Uh, did you see the moon lander died? Uh, you were telling me about that. Tell me more. Yeah, so the uh, moon lander, we talked about this a while back. Uh, Odysseus. <laughs> Odie. So, so it was landing. It was attempting to land on the moon, and it did land on the moon with some complications that they had with communications getting mm. into it. Um, this is a private company, Intuitive Machines, that made the uh, the lunar lander, uh, so it came down too fast mm. and broke one of its legs. Oh, it had six legs, oh. broke one of its legs on touchdown. So that's what ended up having it tip a little bit yeah. and tip over. Yeah, and that was the major problem. They the communication loss oh, was geez. not the major problem. The big one was the fact that the thing landed wrong. Okay. Um, and so when it landed wrong, the it energy. broke its leg. And then so it's the way it's powered is solar panels. Well, okay. the solar panels couldn't get in the right direction <laughs> towards the sun. Gosh, that's a bummer. So it ran out of power and finally died on Thursday night. Oh, can't can't come back to life. <sighs> that's what I'm wondering. It's like when the sun hits it just right, it can wake up. Where am I? Yeah, I wonder if if, you know, if the moon goes where when it's in its rotation, if the moon gets uh in the it gets some sunlight on that thing mm. maybe if it will be revived and be a zombie lander yeah <laughs> that would be cool um so yeah it, it uh it died picture mm. of the moon's surface with uh it it did uh it did send uh a goodbye a picture of the moon's surface Aww. with the earth in the distance did it look like a pink floyd album cover probably okay this is the dark so side sad. of the moon so and then done <laughs> all right what else you got on your uh, your uh, list of things the uh race for u.s senate in michigan just got another candidate former oh. representative justin amush is entering uh, michigan's republican senate primary he announced yesterday okay uh he had been exploring it we had talked about it a little bit but yeah. he decided uh he's gonna throw it in and he's gonna do it uh, he says, after thoroughly evaluating all aspects of a potential campaign, I'm convinced no candidate would be better positioned to win than me. That's what he wrote on social media. Wow. I didn't could, I didn't know you could jump in the race this late. Absolutely. Yeah, you got till April. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, the Republican turned independent hinted he was considering a run for the open seat earlier this year. Uh, his entry um, potentially scrambles the race in Mich Michigan because you've got... Uh, he is uh, the second Palestinian American member of Congress who was mm -hmm. ever elected. Right. And so in Michigan, we just had more than 100,000 voters in the uh, take the Democrat primary mm -hmm. ballot and vote uncommitted because they are uh, upset over the president's uh, Israel mm -hmm. Gaza Strip policy. Mm -hmm. And so for him to get into the race as an independent, he also called for the impeachment of Trump. He was the first one who did it. Oh, yeah, and so yeah, and so you've got a lot of those factors that could coalesce into basically his support. Hmm. It's really interesting. Wow. He has to make it through the primary first. Sure. And uh, that is the Republican field that has right now. The leader looks like Representative Mike Rogers, the former FBI person. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, businessman Sandy Pez Pensler, uh, mm -hmm. former Representative Peter Meyer is also in it. 
they're all trying to get the uh, Republican nod uh, so that they can face off on uh, for the Democrat in November. Probably is going to be Alyssa Slotkin. And I this know, is, I don't know if Harper Hill's going to this make is it. for Debbie Stabenow's seat. Yeah, right, because she's retiring. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So look forward to a lot of action between now and the August primary. Speaking of running, well, not running, but it uh, looks like hiking. Uh, Jeff on our Facebook page says today is the last day to put in your entry reservation for the lottery to hike Mount Whitney in Death Valley, California. Ah, that's good to know. The highest mountain. You, yeah, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> hey, we have some hikers that listen to this show. Yeah, yeah. The highest mountain you can hike in the lower 48 states at 14,505 feet. <laughs> wow. Woof. That sounds fun. I'll uh, I'll do that virtually on the tr- <laughs> on the treadmill maybe, but uh, not so much in person. I wonder if we could do a GoFundMe where if we win the lottery to do that hike, mm-hmm. uh, we'll we promise to wear a, a streaming device and you can virtually hike. We'll do it, but Ooh. you got to you got to buy buy in so that we can go. Yeah, but if I'm doing it, you would get a lot of views of the ground, <laughs> and if you're listening Candy to bars. it, there would be a lot of. Uh, 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 and then just That's like the new ASMR. Yeah, yeah. me just dr- uh, drenching myself with buckets of water. And I can't. I'm turning back. Nope, I give up. <laughs> I'm done. Did you hear? Uh, speaking of uh, uh, hikes and mountains and that kind of thing, a uh, lot of snow coming in on the mm-hmm. West Coast mm-hmm. right now. And they are expecting up to 10 feet of snow. 10 feet? 10 feet of snow uh, at Donner Pass. Oh, yeah. You remember the last time they had a a big snowfall at Donner, (laughs) the Donner party? Right. (laughs) Wow. Which apparently there's a lot of historical fluff and not everything is accurate as what we've been led to believe. But they are getting a lot of snow. Donner Pass could experience snowfall rates of one to two inches per hour, ferocious wind gusts of 50 to 100 miles per hour. Oh, my God. For 72 hours straight. Whoa. Yeah. Does anybody live out that way? <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> I would, man, I would be evacuating that area. The 100 miles an hour 100 plus mile that an much hour snow? plus winds. Yeah. For 72 hours. Nope. Mm-hmm. Hard pass on that one. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that uh, people, I mean, now that they know this is coming, they'll get out if there is anybody living out that way. Yeah. Yeah. Strongest storm of winter so far. Wow. On the West Coast. All right. 10 feet. Well, you think any of that snow will come our way, make nope. its way past uh, past the mountains? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there'll be anything left at that rate. Probably not. Yeah, but, it'll probably uh, hit on the other side of the Rockies and stay there. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll keep our eye on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you imagine? Man. That's that what would... a blizzard is. That yeah, is a that blizzard. Is, that is <laughs> all these people talking about the blizzard of 78. <laughs> <laughs> what about this one? Yeah. All right. Coming up here in just a few minutes, we'll catch you up with sports, news, and your Bloomberg Market Minute is next. At Sturgis Bank, it's our people that make the difference. Meet Patrick Swam, commercial lender for Berrien County. My career in financial services starts. All right, all right. What would you do if you lived in an area where you're going to get 10 feet of snow? Um, I would, if I knew it was coming. Yeah. I would evacuate. You go somewhere else? Yeah. Why? Not staying there. Why? Because I'm going to be stuck there for who knows how long. It'd be a magical wonderland. <laughs> It'd be a little too much. There's, yeah, that's that's beyond mm-hmm. beyond what I could handle. I like a good blizzard. Yeah. And I don't mind being snowed in. Huh. But I like the idea of eventually getting out. Getting out. <laughs> Not your house is going to be completely covered in snow, and yeah. there's a good chance it could cave in. When and, we had when we had the snow here this winter and the very cold temperatures, uh, I think the test was all right. Is the pizza delivery guy going to be able to get here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if the answer was no, it's like okay, this is bad. Yeah, that should be your gauge of uh, not, oh, well, this is a Category 4 snowstorm. No, it's a, yeah, your uh, your pizza is going to be delayed by 45 minutes. All right, that means uh, mm-hmm. I will not be uh, ordering pizza. 45 minutes, oh my gosh. Exactly. Yeah. Um, 
He How's said, everybody doing? Jeff says Donner Pass is dangerous up around Lake Tahoe. So I'm sure some, I'm sure some, if it's by Lake Tahoe, people probably, fancy houses probably got to be up there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tahoe skiing. Um, Bill says they will get out the uh, rotary snow plows <laughs> for the railroads. <laughs> oh, what does that look like? I don't know. A rotary so I know they have plow. the big, I've seen the, the, the little pushers or snow things that they have on the front of the trains, but not a, not a rotary snow plow. Oh, there it is right there. Yeah. Look at that. Rotary snow plow. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Get past the ad. Okay. Oh yeah. That's just like when you, uh, remember the old push mowers that, uh, have no engine on them. Yeah. The, the rotary oh, yeah, yeah. It's that. Oh, okay. Very cool. I didn't know they did that. And they put it on, uh, looks like in front of a train engine there. Cool. That is super cool. Boy, you would not want to be next to that when it's throwing snow. That is an amazing snowblower. Jeff says he's driven it a number of times and the highway patrol will make you chain up. Yeah, chaining up, when you have to go over the passes and chains are required, mm -hmm. not fun. No. <laughs> not fun at all. No. But chains are great. You ever drive on chains? No. Yeah. Well, no, no, okay. no. I'm trying to think. Yeah, they give you traction. Yeah, you it, like the uh, the stud things. I do like the studs, but the studs. There's a there's a time when the studs are good, and there's a time when chains are required. Right. And the state patrol in Washington State would say, if you don't have chains, you're not going over. Wow. Uh, and they would stop you or turn you around. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, cause you you got to be safe. Got to be safe. Because they got they get tired of pulling people out of the exactly. ditch. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if if they know that the way for you to get to where you need to go is having chains on your car and you don't have them. Yeah. Then... And I, and I think it's a test. I think it's a driving test. If you have the dexterity in sub zero temperatures where snows everywhere to put chains on your tires. Oh, that's the problem. It, right? it takes a long time to put them on. <laughs> it's there. a pain. That's why you need the James Bond car that just spikes and things coming right out of it. Yeah, two-inch spikes would be cool. Wow, uh, this uh, Bill, thank you for telling us about the rotary snow train because yeah. I'm mesmerized by the video. I'm just watching this thing. It's just throwing snow and cleaning That's cool. off the tracks. That's cool. Super cool. Yeah, you always wonder, like, when big snowstorms happen, how are they able to uh, to move all that snow that quick? Because they've got it off the tracks and everything. Like, how do they do it? Well, yeah. I one would of have those done, marvels. marbles. I would have done toaster. Huge toaster on the front of a train. Ooh. Just heat it up red hot. Ooh, it just melts it. <laughs> and mm. then all the tracks would have been. Yeah, but then that would probably ice bent up. Bent over. It would oh, probably yeah. ice, ice up around it. It would have bent the metal. It would have created an ice pool everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would not have been Electrocution. Good. Electrocution would have happened. All the wildlife would have been nope. angry. Mm-hmm. You would have like hit a deer, but then like cook the deer as soon as you uh, hit it. <laughs> Just, you got a roasted deer. Lunch time. Roasted deer. <laughs> What's that smell? Mm, venison. Mm. I just smell like jerky. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. Saw its 14th record this year. The NASDAQ hit its first new high since 2021. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. It's the morning show with Johnny and Ken on 94.9 WSJM. Just about 7.30. It's Friday, and today we're dealing with some clouds, some rain possible, as well as a high of 45. Tonight it's going to be cloudy, low down to 35. And then Saturday, 60. Mm. Man, that's nice. Yeah. Um, I'm going to look ahead even to Sunday and see where we're at. Sunday's going to be 65. Oh, my gosh. Monday, 67. I think I'm going to come down with a cold on Monday. Yeah. Take a nice little three-day Sunday, weekend Monday, there. not doing anything. Yeah. Gonna not go to work, don't do anything. <laughs> Sometimes uh, the boss listens to the show, so we should be careful. He's right down the hall. Oh, is he here already? He's already here. <sighs> yeah. Because we were talking last week about... Uh, weird questions that people ask during an employment interview. Yep, he yep. was giving us, giving us, uh, I don't know, heat about it yesterday. Right. I thought we had good, good, good points. Well, I think we, we talked about, we, yeah. we didn't, you know, we say like, diss anything. yeah, we didn't diss anybody on yeah. anything. We just talked about, you know, any of the job interviews that you had, those, those odd <laughs> questions. And then, cause ours, ours really wasn't about the hiring. Right. 
conversation. It was more about the what you should not do at work. Right. The oversharing and all that. And then right. it kind of went off into the tangent into the of piece. the yeah. hiring yeah. and interview piece. But I mean, how many job interviews have you had? I don't know. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't had that many. Oh, luckily. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't even work here. I just, <laughs> I never even uh, applied. Oh, I, that's why I had to let you in today. <laughs> exactly. That's why I, that's why my key fob didn't work. It First thing I asked Johnny broken. is, oh, your fob didn't work. Uh, should I let you in? <laughs> Here, hang on. Let me call Dave. Yeah, call the call the boss. Yeah, I got fired yesterday, so I'm not supposed to be here. Well, you're doing a great job. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Dave, Dave Wolf is coming up here in just a little while, but first, let's find out what's happening in the news. WSJM News Now. Team coverage from the WSJM Newsroom on News Talk Sports 94.9 WSJM. In the WSJM Newsroom, I'm Ken Lundberg. Here's some of the stories that we're following. The Niles Police Department telling us that early yesterday morning, approximately 3 a.m., officers were dispatched to a Shell gas station at 434 South 11th Street in Niles in response to a 911 call reporting an armed robbery. Police say two males entered the gas station brandishing handguns. They proceeded to hold the employee hostage until they got the cash. Niles police say the suspects, both described as black males in their 20s of average height, were wearing dark clothing and ski masks. Both were armed with handguns. They reportedly fled on foot. No customers were inside the business at the time of the robbery, and the employee, they say, suffered no physical injury. The Niles Police Department is actively investigating, and they urge anyone who may have information about that to contact them as soon as possible. Thousands of customers in Benton Harbor were without power for about 90 minutes yesterday. Indiana, Michigan Power confirmed the outage started at 930 in the morning. About 2,300 households were without electricity for 90 minutes until about 11 a.m. when the problem was fixed. INM says crews were performing a scheduled work and apparently caused an accidental outage. All affected customers have since had their service restored. And work is underway around Southwest Michigan to expand broadband internet to those who aren't currently served. Midwest Energy and Communications is rolling out new service to thousands of properties in the next couple of years, thanks to a state grant and local support. The company's Amy Pales tells us that MEC has been laying fiber in rural areas east of Benton Harbor around Orinoco Township and in pockets of Cass County for the last couple of years. Slated for this year will be work around Bertrand Township, Galeen, and Eau Claire. Pale says residents will receive notice and the MEC trucks will come in with their huge spools. Installation, uh, how long it will take to do that depends on the area that they have to work in. Okay. Once uh, And once the new broad, broadband lines have been laid, those in the area will be notified and have the opportunity to purchase broadband or at least rent it. $100 for the initial sign-up, $65 a month after that for service. Okay. In the WSJM Newsroom, I'm Ken Lundberg. Sports on the way here. A few right now. Let's find out what's happening around the state. The Michigan News Network. I'm back. Broadband work. Love it. Broadband work. What are they doing out here? Uh, gas. Gas. Okay. Yeah, they're doing a gas pipe replacement. Gotcha. Yeah, it's just a small area. Yeah. Uh, but it is uh, diverting the traffic. So if you're on Napier Avenue, around right about here our by radio the radio station, station yep. uh, kind of where Ox Creek goes under it, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, probably 500 yards, you figure. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, 500 yards. Just before the school is where it stops. So they've got crews out there. Like I said the other day, they were in t-shirts enjoying the sunshine, and then yeah, they were then in they winter to... coats. Yep. <laughs> now they're back in t-shirts probably. Well, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah, because I knew it wasn't broadband because the, the issue is a smaller tube. Orange. Yeah, orange tube. Yeah, this one's the yellow. Okay. See the yellow out there? That actually might be to keep stuff from going into the creek, but. Now, I know we're not uh, road engineers. workers or engineers, yep. but do they... Is, is is the color mean something? Oh yeah, the color the yellow probably means gas, and then I don't know about the gas, but the orange the orange tube you see that's where you've always seen the fiber go in. Yeah, fiber usually your cables. communication lines. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I guess then, it, when you think about it, I have seen like phone boxes and things mm -hmm. like that. They'll have a little orange mm -hmm. thing on it. Yeah, mm. but the any, more you know, anytime you see the little flags pop up. You yep. know something's happening. And the more flags, the more trouble he got. <laughs> yeah, that that was interesting. We did, we were uh, 
gonna, gonna plant some things and and dig dig a little bit. Uh oh. Uh, not too deep. Call before you dig. We did. Okay. We did, and but then we because we when we were digging we we uh, there was like a random plastic thing. <laughs> uh oh. That uh, like it must. What I think uh. it was was that when they were at some point there was like a lamp post. Like okay. a, that the homeowner had done and they ran, maybe they ran some wire or something like that uh-huh. to the end of the end of the sidewalk. And so we asked her like, is that a problem? Is that a thing? And they're like, no, that's nothing. Like, oh, okay. But then they did the, pss, 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 pss. Yeah. there's, you know, fiber oh, so you optic, had, all kinds of different stuff. You called stuff. them out and they checked. Oh yeah. They checked okay. everything before we even put a shovel on the ground. Okay. Cause you got to call. You got to call. call. Call before, before you dig. dig. Yeah. 811. Um, no, we called them, but they were like, yeah, there's this, there's this, there's this, you have this and yeah. Nothing crazy. Mm. Just like on one side of the house, the other side, fine. Everything where it was as expected, mm. pretty much. Mm. But they've got, uh, found out there is fiber by my house. <laughs> I don't, I don't take advantage of it. You but should tap into it. You ever see those people, uh, when, uh, the coaxial cable boxes would have this random wire running off it, going to a house that didn't have service. Uh, Did you ever see that where they're pirating stuff? Uh, you should do that with the fiber optic. Maybe. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think my neighbor has it. Yeah. I Just pirated I pirated cable uh, from my parents once. Oh, really? Yeah. How far away? Well, it was my bedroom. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't supposed to have a TV. Oh. <laughs> but wait. I went under the house and drilled a hole under my bedroom and took the, there was a junction box for yep. the cable. And I just ran an extra coaxial cable into my bedroom oh wow yeah rebel. teenage teenage rebel rebel yeah yeah free cable. it rebel free cable that. yeah wow you back had, when we you had, had 13 con- channels <laughs> so you had control of it independently from like you weren't when yeah, you were changing i didn't have the to channels. watch what they were watching yeah yeah no wow. more lawrence welk that's awesome <laughs> do you love lawrence welk though? i do love lawrence welk it's a lot of fun Good to time. watch yeah wow. man that's awesome yeah, yeah i've got a. Uh, I just got the regular, I think I've got Xfinity or something. Hmm. Works all right. All the t- TVs that I have in my house now, I have three TVs in the house. Our uh, router has been giving us issues for two weeks now. And I know Stephanie is supposed to call them. So she's listening right now and has. Did you turn it off and turn it back on? Yep. Hmm. Unplugged it, turned it off, turned it on. Did you. Like a uh, Nintendo, did you go <laughs> <laughs> the cartridge? Had I the opportunity for that? Yes, I would have. But there's just, I mean, they basically have you throw away the routers anymore. Mm-hmm. They say bring them back to the service place, but the guy just said, thanks. Well, that's what I'm worried about is is I have, I don't really have any issues with my internet uh, <laughs> usually. But yeah. there are times where I'm like thinking, is it getting, is it cause it's getting old when things drop out every once in a while? Cause I've had that since I moved into my house. So it's close to five years old. Ooh. So it's probably time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just through, I rent it through Xfinity. So they don't even like notify me and say, Hey, let's put you, let's give you a new one. Mm-hmm. But maybe I will. Maybe I'll just walk in there and say, Hey, I've had this for too long. Change me out. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. All right. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go to the concert on Saturday what? night. Yeah. Oh, Johnny. I got stuff to do on Sunday. Johnny. I got stuff to do. Um, Busy Sunday. What kind of act? This is the Bailey Zimmerman? Yeah, it's a country guy. And I like country, but I don't want to, I don't want to go to one thing and then go to another thing and then be really tired. Um, but he is good from what I hear. Yeah, he's got some good ones. Yeah, he plays guitar. He he does. <laughs> I don't play too much of it here because then it'll kick us off on right. the Facebooks or the YouTubes. But um, yeah, looks like a fine young man playing country music. Yep. Uh, Rock in a hard place, religiously. Rock in a hard place is a good song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's got an acoustic version of it too. You should uh, put that on your phone so that that's the first song that you hear. I wish. When you get in your car. I can rename it to A. There you go. <laughs> Something. Um, yeah, he's going to be playing at the uh, the Egyptian Room 
at the old National Center in Indianapolis. Yeah. I heard tonight and tomorrow. I heard that uh, his show is going to be the best show ever in the history of the United States and really? mu- and music. Oh, um, and all of music, all of like, music ever. There's just going to be a, a <laughs> tornado. Happen. Apparently, apparently, also anyone who was backstage got to go out for a big sing along at the end oh. for the fifth encore. Oh, the fifth yeah. encore, <laughs> really. Wow. I don't think he has and enough everyone music who for that. participated then got a record contract themselves. Oh, that's cool. So you that's, may want to reconsider your decision. That's, uh, that's neat. I will, uh, <laughs> I'll take that under advisement. Um, no, he's one of those rising country stars. I mean, country's huge. Um, uh, let's see. We've got uh, Diane. Good morning, Diane. Now she's joined us. Hello. We said, I said good morning earlier, Diane, because I missed you. We did. We did, um, Diane. Good morning. And then Teresa. Um, Diane, did you get a chance to go to the bookstore? I know you were talking about going to the bookstore at some point. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about employees and interview questions and employers and stuff like that. Jeff, uh, did you see Jeff's oh, comment yeah. there? He says, I had an employer ask if I had any skeletons in my closet. <laughs> I had no idea, no idea what he was asking. asking. Well, what do you what do you talk? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Have you seen my closet? <laughs> what do you mean? Like human skeletons? Right. <laughs> or like just animals? <laughs> that is such a weird question to ask somebody. I heard uh, uh, somebody they on Dan Patrick's show. Okay. They were going through because the combine is happening. That's right. Uh, and they have the interviews. Mm-hmm. And this is where they also want to get to know the players, of right. course, physically, but they also, you know, yeah, how mentally. they are as a character yeah. and, and mentally. And um, one of them said that they, this is, uh, I can't remember which quarterback or somebody that they had asked before. They're like, what was the weirdest question you had? Mm -hmm. And they were like, I don't know. They were asking me about like my girlfriend. Like, like what? Like, how's your, how's your relationship? Are you going to get married? Like, Mm. it just seemed odd. So I guess every, every kind of question, weird question is on the table when you're doing the, uh, the NFL interviews. Um, And I don't know if this is also where they do the Wonderlick test. What is that? The Wonderlick test is this weird test that they take. Mm-hmm. And it's a standardized test, but it's there's a lot of wacky questions. And that's how they kind of figure out your, your intelligence. Mm. It's kind of like the football IQ test. So like if a quarterback mm-hmm. who has to memorize a bunch of plays and process a lot of things very quickly okay. scores low on the Wonderlick test, then... His draft uh, capital, he he goes down. He, his yeah, his rankings go down because of that. Um, players that have good ones, good scores, end up doing pretty well. Hmm. So, and you are going to the combine this weekend. I'm going to the combine. Uh, the world record for a forty yard dash, like four two something, four point two two seconds. <sighs> I did see a linebacker. I was looking at the rankings this yeah. morning of the fastest and the fastest. They did linebackers and I think defensive linemen yesterday. Four, four, three. But you, and that's incredibly fast. That's covering yeah. basically 10 yards per second. Yep. Per second. Mm-hmm. And Top. you think about the, what it takes for that, <laughs> that startup and getting going. Yeah. To get motion going. Yeah. Tom Brady, as we talked about earlier today, showed up at the combine. Ran faster. And did not run as fast as a 4-2, but he ran a 5-2-8. That, that was his time. The, uh, this I'm time. sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. He ran 5-2-8 in 2000. Okay. When he was doing the draft, when he was getting drafted. He ran a 5-1-8 and a 5-1-2. Oh, nice. So you said he was slow. <laughs> he He was slow when he was starting up. I mean... That's right. five point two eight seconds for forty yards. All right, hang on. <laughs> Let's get back to okay. the show. All right. Hey, good morning. I wish I could run that fast. How fast do you think you could run the forty I, yard dash? No, I mean, how fast could the forty yard dash run me? Is the question. <laughs> well, I think we should uh, maybe not this year, but next year. <laughs> next year, we'll uh, we'll mark it out. Next um, year, let's let's discuss it. Next let's year. talk about it. Next let's year. see see if we do it. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I'm not going to be here next year. No, oh, no. Um, no, the 40-yard dash is one of the many uh, measurements that they do 
for um for the NFL combine and when they're trying to figure out how these players fare. Yeah. Um, some of the players aren't going to the the combine or they're not doing certain things at the combine, like some of the top picks. What they like to do is they'll say, Well, I'm gonna have a pro day where all of you NFL scouts and general managers and people that do all the picking, I'm going to invite you to my closed session mm. to where I throw the ball. I do all the things. I don't really like that idea. No, why I not? like, cause I like the level playing field <clears throat> because what they do with the NFL combine is it's just everybody. It's that cattle call of, okay, your quarterback number six, you're going to throw to wide receiver number two, mm. this route, boom, go. Um, and you just kind of go through the things. What they do when they do these pro days is they, you as the quarterback, you invite uh, your wide receivers, maybe guys that you've been throwing to for months, maybe even yeah, years. People you're comfortable with, you know the yeah, plays. And you know what's going on, and then you throw, and then that's how you they want to show off their talent. But mm -hmm. I like the idea of the combine because you don't get yeah. to pick and choose. Yeah. Like, how do you do? Right. Like, moments notice. Exactly. Yeah. Think on your feet. Huh. Um, how fast do you think you could run a 40 yard? No dash? idea. No idea whatsoever. Did you ever run in uh like high school? Sure. How fast did you run like track or anything like that? I I barely remember the year I graduated. <laughs> See, I remember <laughs> I was talking to my brother about this yesterday. Yeah. How because I was like, Oh, yeah, the the personal trainer that I was talking with at the yeah. Renaissance Athletic Club. He used to wrestle. He probably knows this person, probably knows this person. <clears throat> and I was pulling out factoids of <laughs> records. Literally, Ken, these are records that sit on a plaque oh in the gymnasium at my old high school. Okay. I had half of them memorized. Wow. Of like, oh, yeah, well, blah, 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 used to wrestle this time. And they've had this many wins or they this is what their record was and this. My brother's like, how do you know that stuff? <laughs> I don't even remember what I did yesterday or what I wore yesterday. Oh, boy. 40-yard um, dash, though. Yeah. Uh, Rich Eisen does the 40-yard dash. Why? He does it every year, and okay. he raises money for St. Jude. Aw. Um, and what's what's cool is he does it in a suit. Oh, geez. He wears a I suit. Hope, I hope he, he does wear running shoes. shoes. Okay, he does good. wear running shoes. That would hurt. Uh, but he runs it uh, and raises a ton of money for St. Jude. And he's That's been doing awesome. it for uh, a number of years. And I think, I'm not sure what day he's going to do it because he usually does it. He usually goes down to the NFL Combine mm -hmm. and runs it. And I think, oh man, I, I got to look and see. He might even run it uh, this weekend. Wow. Or today. Okay. So we'll have to wait and see about that. But I think, um, you know, because like Tom Brady, he yeah. ran a faster 40-yard dash than he did when he was being drafted. So that's 20-some years. Yeah. I wonder if I could run faster than what I ran when I was in high school. Uh, and what we're talking about is the Combine. It's the happening combine. In, in Indianapolis this weekend. Yep. John, Johnny's going to go. Yep. And uh, sometimes the NFL stars show up just to kind of inspire the young people sure. who are there trying to get into the NFL uh, at the outset there. And Tom Brady, even though he's retired, he ran the 40 yard dash. He showed up. He wasn't in costume or anything. No, he, there, he, do, he didn't disguise himself. It wasn't like Chad Powers no. that Eli Manning did last year. <laughs> he didn't do that. But uh, when he, when he ran the 40 yard dash in 2000 at the combine, he ran it 5.28 seconds, mm -hmm. which is fast. I think it's fast because the world record is 4.22 as for, we mentioned. For quarterbacks, uh, it would be considered a slow quarterback. And then Brady, he ran it again yesterday, 5.12. The dude's like, what, 45 years old or something? Or 40 years 46. old? 46. 46? Yep. And he ran it that fast? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So he could still play. He could still play in the NFL, which is crazy to think Don't about it. Don't tell that him age. that. He's going to come out of retirement again. He might. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was saying that that the you know the 49ers uh, they lost the Super Bowl. No. They were saying, "Hey, call Tom Brady." Sometimes you just got to let go. I don't think he can. <laughs> I don't, I mean, when you can do that, when you can still run that fast and still throw and These do all those other kids things. Don't know what speed is. I mean, he obviously doesn't need the money. No. He obviously doesn't need another championship ring. No. He's got plenty of those. Yeah. So, we'll have to wait and see, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um I have no idea what I'm getting into. No idea what's going to happen down there. I predict fun. Um, 
it's free. That I mean, that's, that's starting fun. off on the right foot yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and they said it's a fun fan experience. There may even be opportunities for autographs. So I don't know how that works. If you know when the players aren't running the forty yard dash or yeah. jumping in the air, wear your running shoes. Go down there and see if they'll let you on. I doubt they'll let me onto the field. <laughs> they it, they have a lot of time between events. They do, and so they just, only do it in certain areas. Yeah. Like the forty yard dash happens like on the sideline. Yeah. So maybe I'll uh maybe I'll, I'll give it a Is shot. Is Matt going with you? Uh, I I think maybe he's got a the guy has a crazy crazy job. Okay. He, he's not only is he in Nashville yeah. where he has been enjoying That's concerts awesome. and different things, songwriter stuff. Yeah. Um, rubbing elbows with record companies. Oh boy, he's gonna drive back up, and then he's like, "Yeah, let's hang out for a little bit." But then I got that concert that I'm gonna go to. I was like, <laughs> I I don't think I can do that. Oh boy. Uh, other things to talk about here, real quick. Uh, do you see that the diner booth mm. from the final scene of Sopranos oh. is available on eBay? I didn't know they were in a booth. I thought, the, thought yeah, they, they were s- at a table. No, they sat in a diner. They sat in a booth and they had the little the little radio, the little diner radio that sits in the sits in diners okay. like they do back in the day. I thought it was a table. Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, it's a little booth. Because he sat with his back to the door, which he never do. Right. As a mobster. Right. Not um, a mobster. He was a garbage man. So this is uh, on eBay. Yeah. So I know you you troll eBay a I lot. Uh, this is from the Holston's Di- Deli in Bloomfield, <laughs> New Jersey, New Jersey, <laughs> New Jersey. Uh, which is being renovated. Now, the listing, which was uh, has topped 68 grand, says it comes with the bench seat, the table, divider wall and a plaque that reads reserve for the soprano family <laughs> so yeah you're uh, obviously probably going to need to rent a van or a truck or whatever to get that out of there probably local pickup or you have to drive all the way there and the famous jukebox that they turn the radio on and it plays that song yeah yeah um you don't get that you don't get the jukebox oh you don't get the jukebox no and that's what i would want yeah because those are cool those classic little Little jukebox that yeah, have yeah, like, yeah. you know, eight songs on mm-hmm. them. Those are really cool. What was the song that played? Wasn't it Journey? Yeah. Which one? Uh, I think Don't Stop Believing. Hmm. I think you're right. Yeah, I think it was Don't Stop. And then I think it was like, Don't Stop. And then it went to black. Cut out. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't, e- we still don't even know if he got whacked or not, but we think he yeah, did. Yeah, we have no idea what happened afterwards. But we think he did. We think. Yeah. He leaves it to the imagination. Yeah. A lot of people didn't like the ending of The Sopranos. I appreciated it. Yeah. Of course, it caused a lot of controversy when it was playing because of how it cut cut yeah. itself off. It wasn't a fade to black. It was a no. hard, hard, hard cut, cut mm-hmm. to black. And usually you never see that in any show. So people were like calling their cable company, <laughs> this saying, the what finale. happened? I, you know, millions of people are watching this live and... They thought something went wrong. Yeah. What happened? What is, what's going on? Mm. So, yeah. So still, if you want a piece of history. Still a better episode than the uh, the uh, episode of Game of Thrones where the, everything was in the dark. That was so annoying. And my, I'm not a Game of Thrones person, but I, I watched it just yeah. to see how annoying it was. I heard the whole season, like a ton of that whole sh- series. Was thing. There was a lot of like they filmed it in very dark. Yeah, but there's things. one episode in particular where you, you were basically watching stuff dark stuff move around amongst shadows so you had to like shut the, the lights time. off battle scenes not have any light on in the house the fog of war Ugh. yeah that's dumb anyways uh we got some other things to get to here in just a moment we have your moody on the market update next it's the morning show on 94.9 wsjm if you can click your heels together like dorothy and say there's no place like rome or paris or london instead All right, we'll talk in just a minute for your Moody on the Market update. And then I got to duck out because I got to get you this. You got to duck meet, out. I got to get this recording thing started. All good. Can I give you a cart number? Um, Do you want a cart number? Give me whatever you got, man. Uh, either use a cart number or do you want to use, you can use uh, 50010. It has the music already on it. Oh, you want to do that? Oh, okay. Yeah. For the top of the hour. Oh, yeah. For the top of the hour. This is the behind the scenes stuff right here. 50010. Yeah. Do you want to use that one for eight eight o'clock? Yeah. What I'll do is I'll cue it up. (laughs) (laughs) 
All right. We promise behind the scenes. This is that's true. You got to you got to know the uh, yeah. you're learning the jargon here. All right, let's get back to it. It's the morning show with Johnny and Ken on ninety four point nine WSJM. Yes, sir. Mm, mm, mm. When you want to know Southwest Michigan's business, you can find it MoodyOnTheMarket.com and the Moody on the Market app. Our team of contributors always own it. We've got all kinds of things uh, from business updates to interesting people you should know, and as well as uh, Southwest Michigan and why we love it here in Ken's column. That's just going to be called Ken's column. Yes. It's all right there. <laughs> <laughs> at uh, moodyonthemarket.com. Your update brought to you by our friends at Insurance Management Service called IMS Today, your local auto owner's agency with locations in St. Joseph and Niles. And talking about a business opening a new location in Niles, this is this the reason this one interested me is because they bill it as a one-of-a-kind celebration Ooh. for a grand opening. Now, it's like, okay, come on. Sure. Is that a little bit of hyperbole? Are we yeah. puffing it up a little bit? Actually, I don't think so. Uh, this is Horizon Realty Group, and that m- name might sound familiar because Kyle Zelmer was recently recognized as the Realtor, Realtor of, the of the Year. Yeah, I remember And that. he was part of the Moody on the Market 40 Under 40 right. for 2023. Look at that. Well, he's opening a new storefront location in Niles. The mm-hmm. storefront's going to be at 222 North Front Street, and doors will officially open on March 23rd. What are they going to do for that? Well, they promise a one-of-a-kind grand opening celebration featuring live music from area artists, mm-hmm. um, local artist art displays, and a speed painting demonstration from the reigning Miss Michigan, what? Maya Shookneck. What? Yeah. No way. That's why I'm saying it's like one-of-a-kind deal. That sounds pretty cool. It does sound cool. So, that I mean, that's a very community-oriented thing. So, we thought we'd we'd put it up there. Absolutely. Yeah. I uh, drove by the other day. Yeah. Uh, great location. Yeah. Great spot. Front Street. Yeah. Cool spot. Uh, so, Kyle, founder of Horizon Realty Group, uh, says that he's excited to invite the community. He said this event is not just about opening our doors. It's about welcoming our neighbors and friends to experience the Horizon Realty Group difference. Yeah, they're very community oriented. These, uh, let's see, more than 400 hours of community service contributed since they opened in 2022, uh, given back more than $15,000 to the community, he says. So that uh, that event is set for March 23rd, 10 a.m., Niles. All right. Yeah, 222 Front Street. I might have to go check that out. Yeah, and you can see Maya Shookneck, the Miss Michigan Current Miss Michigan is going to be speed painting. I just want to see the speed painting thing because yeah. I've I've seen the videos that she's uh, for yes, her competition for Miss America, and I was like, that's cool. Yeah, that's is. cool. It is cool. So, okay, right. sounds good. All we'll, right, we'll check it out. All right, good. All right. See you in a few minutes. <laughs> Your uh, Moody on the Market update is brought to you by our friends at Insurance Management Service. Call IMS today. Call IMS today. Your local auto owners agency with locations in St. Joseph and in Niles. We're watching over you. Ah, yeah. All right, everybody. That does it for us. Uh, Ken's going to go do more I work. Yep. Uh, I will have more things going on after eight. So uh, come hang out and uh, do that. And we will. Uh, Get on with the show, but you get on with your weekend and enjoy it. And we'll talk again on Monday.